everybody welcome back to my channel i'm susan lynn i'm a psychic and a medium and today we're going to be talking about politics i am jumping on you guys seriously this is how much i love you guys it is honestly 5 24 in the morning and yes i am doing this video because i'm super busy but i know that you guys are let's just call it what it is shall we freaking out <laughs> you're freaking out i know you're freaking out about Trump making his bail bond money. I just want to check in with you guys and walk you back off the ledge. Listen, you guys, the guides, the spirit guides never said he wasn't going to make the bail bond money. Number one. Number two, remember they told you guys that his bail bond money would be reduced. It was. They told you he would get an extension to pay it. He did. Uh, and here we are. He's paid it. This this was a foregone conclusion. The spirit guides are saying since it was reduced from 400 and whatever, you know, million dollars down to half of that, it was a foregone conclusion. He would find somebody to bail him out, which is exactly what they just said. Um, and they said that, Oh, that's what they were saying. Okay. Um, and they're saying that uh, the guy that the guy is not, it's a company, right? It's a company that has given, has given up them who, who has, um, posted the bail, who's what, whatever your legalese term you use, there's a company that did that. The guy that owns, the guy that is on the bank of the company, which I think is AXOS, A-X-O-S, the guy that's on the board of that bank is this guy who is a, made all his money from sub loan, from basically being a loan shark, car, dealership salesperson. So his dad had a car dealership. He took over the dealership. He started making loans to people who couldn't afford cars, people who had very bad credit or no credit or whatever. So he started basically, um, really the guides are saying for entertainment purposes only, and allegedly, basically was a loan shark. He was a this kind of century, this today's version of a loan shark. And guess what? He made a lot of money doing that. And then he used that money to increase his uh, his businesses. And he ended up buying and, and creating a lot of other, I think he has at least three businesses, including one that is an insurance agency of some sort. So I don't remember if it's Axos. He's on the board of Axos. So I'm not sure if it's the insur Knight Insurance Company that posted the bond or if it was Axos. But this same guy, has his fingers in all of these pots and all of these pots lead to 45. Okay. So we know that this guy's a big 45 supporter. He's written checks to 45. His wife has written checks to 45, uh, as, you know, for campaign uh, funds. We know this guy likes him some Trump. Okay. Now I can't remember his name right now. It doesn't really matter. It's probably better if I don't say it, to be honest with you. But you know, you know what the guides, the spirit guides woke me up this morning. If you are drinking coffee or tea, or I don't know what you might be drinking this morning and you don't need to tell me, do not take a drink when I say this. They woke me up saying somebody's tiny little peanuts were in a vice. Somebody's nuts were in a vice, but they said peanuts, tiny peanuts are in a vice. And then because I'm very visual, I saw this picture of these little bitty peanuts in this vice. I'm like, what a visual to wake up to. Who the heck's nuts are in a vice? This is how I woke up this morning, you guys. You know, who is it that had this song, I woke up this way? Well, this is how I woke up with nuts in a vice. Here we are today, 2024, talking about nuts in a vice and politics. I don't know. Maybe things never change. You know? Anyway, whose nuts are in a vice, you might be asking. Well, you might think that they're Trump's, but I don't think so. His nuts are gone. I think it's this gentleman whom spirit guides have very handily removed his name from my memory bank. So I don't probably get in trouble. So anyway, this guy, you can find his name quite easily. He's going to be the talk of the town here for the next couple of days. Anyway, this guy, do we want to feel sorry for him? Really and truly, do we want to feel sorry for him? Because anybody that is seriously dumb enough I mean, you want to talk about Darwin. We want to talk about that level of this man's 
you know, this man's progeny, this man's genome, this man's DNA is not going to survive because it's just not smart enough. It's swimming in the gene pool so small, so shallow, it can't survive. So I do feel sorry for him. Really, I do. So anyway, anybody dumb enough to get in business with 45 is going to go down. And especially now, because now is when we have this laser light. It's 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 really like, I don't know, a spotlight, right? So when you're on the stage and the light starts out big and then it narrows down to this pinprick, we're talking about a lot of small things right now, aren't we? Anyway, this pinprick, um, it's, it's focused down on 45 and anybody 45 has connection to. It's almost like, you know, I can see Jack Smith taking his pad, legal pad and going, oh, another one. Let me add him to my list. Let's take a look at what he's been doing. Because you know that if he's associated with 45, he's been doing up to no good. You know this. And then you look at this guy's history and you see that he made all his money off the backs of people who have poor credit. He made all his money off of the backs of people who couldn't afford to buy transportation. That sounds just like 45's ilk, except for one thing. This guy is one of the few people that haven't been bankrupted over and over again. But, oh, let me think. My pillow wasn't, the my pillow guy wasn't bankrupted before he met 45. So this guy, his tiny little peanuts are in a vice. His, I feel like he is going to have scrutiny and not because, I mean, not because of favorable treatment uh, by the DOJ towards people who would be associated with 45 or unfavorable treatment, as 45 would say. In other words, it's not a witch hunt against people around 45. It's simply that if there's honey, there's bees. You know, you know who associates with 45 is going to be crooked. They're going to have been gotten ill-gotten gains is what the guides are saying. So you know that any it's, it's almost like, again, they're saying, put some honey out, you're going to get bees. Trump is the honey. The bees are people like this guy who bailed him out. And I know this guy didn't personally bail him out, but he's either in charge of the company that bailed him out or he's on the board of the bank to build him out. I can't remember which, but let's just say the spirit guides want to bring this man into Trump's really close orbit. Okay. And now people are saying this guy is not, <laughs> that's what's kind of funny. That's, that's actually what's kind of funny is they're saying this guy is a smart businessman, right? He, he built his businesses, multiple businesses up from being the son of a dealership owner. I mean, one car dealership does not make typically someone who has a worldwide financial presence. I wonder how he got there. I wonder how he was able to extrapolate, how he was able to build that one dealership into a worldwide financial, you know, global group of businesses. And I bet you and I probably just came to the same conclusion. You're probably screaming at your screen right now. Don't do that. You need to bring your blood pressure down. We've had this conversation before, right? Seriously, this guy probably has connections to something that might be, that might look like that you might wonder, you might like wonder, I wonder if this guy's got connections to organized crime. You know, I wonder about that sometimes because I have to frame things in such a way. So I'm wondering if FinCEN, which is the, it's, it's an acronym guys. My guides gave it to me. Some part of Susan's brain that is still operating knows what it means, but FinCEN is the uh, global finance. It's, it's the United States, but it's about monitoring financial crimes. It's monitoring financial crimes. FinCEN. <laughs> they're going to be looking into this man and they're going to be looking into Trump. And, and so the other thing I want to tell you guys is, so we know this guy's toast. I mean, God bless him. His, his businesses are on fire. Five alarm fires. 16 months from now, the guides are saying very specifically 16 months, this man might be in jail. <laughs> 
or if he's not in jail, he might be, you know, out a window or drinking some really rotten tea, or he might be broke like my pillow guy who I think is going to go to jail. Anyway, his prognosis is not good. You know, he's got Trump disease. Anybody that gets close to this guy ends up getting an attorney, going bankrupt, and generally speaking, going to jail. So this guy has put the final rubber stamp in his destiny, in his passport of, of Trump destiny to hell, basically, is what the guides just said, which is quite a mouthful, and I can't believe I got it all out. But I really want to talk about something else because the guides keep talking about this guy. Anyway, I want to talk about, so, okay, 45 got got his money. He's, he's a, once again, you might say evaded justice. Well, so right. I'm channeling this because Susan would agree with you and, and she'd probably be cussing a lot. I was cussing a lot just before this video. So this is the spirit guides leveling out my energy. And what the spirit guides are saying is, is that he is doing what any American would do given their access to really good legal help and their access to fame and fortune and their and their access to white skin and being a man. So basically he's he is getting some breaks, but these are the same breaks that a lot of other people have gotten. Number one. Number two, he's he's doing what he needs to do to get through the legal system. He he made bond. Yes, his bond was reduced, but he made bond. He's literally just doing the things he needs to do to go through the legal system. We need to keep our legal system intact. If we start jumping over things in our legal system, the way they, you know, the way Trump disregards laws, if we started disregarding laws, meaning the DOJ or meaning Jack Smith or any of these judges or any of these prosecutors, then we're no better than him. Then we're, we're, we are helping our legal system, our judicial system to break down. Okay, we're playing chess here, folks. Just remember that. He made a move. He got his bond. That's his move. That's his only move. All he did was keep his properties from being sold. That's all he did. And in the process of that, he became more leveraged. Now we have this, why? Oh, okay, right. I, they keep talking about Mershon, Mershon. They're screaming at me and it's too early in the morning to be yelling at the person who's working with you. They're saying, we're not screaming, you're not listening. You know, this seems like this is like a, a theme in my life. I don't know why, but anyway. So anyway, Mershon, Mershon, Judge Mershon. Okay, lots going on with Judge Mershon. Now, why that makes sense with what I was just talking about was that Judge Mershon, because they just said, okay, he's leveraged to the hilt. 45 is leveraged to the hilt. He could get more loans, theoretically speaking, but not really. This, this is kind of it. And it was only it because they reduced his bond. Now, the next thing coming is this criminal court case, which Alvin Bragg is going to be heading up. Now, I'm just going to remind everybody because I have a lot of new viewers. Last year, the spirit guide said 100 archers were going to pull their arrow, arrows and point their bows at 45. 100. 95 were going to miss. Five were going to hit. Here we have Bragg, E. Jean Carroll, Bonnie Willis, um, Tish James, and Jack Smith. Five, y'all. Okay, so here we are with our five arrows. What is active right now, if you think about this being a war, this is one of the battles that's happening to win the bigger the bigger war. We have Alvin Bragg is up. He is up. So we have Judge Mersham. And the reason they wanted to say that he's leveraged to the hilt is because this case is not like, now I'm about to tell you something you don't want to hear. Okay. I'm just going to warn you right now. 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES. Press one for complaints. I used to have to tell you that almost every reading. Remember those days? Anyway, because I don't, I'm just the vessel. I don't see him going to jail. I've never, not one time, 
told you guys I see him going to general population Rikers. No, I don't see it. Hey, if I'm wrong, I'll be happy to say so because I would love to see him at Rikers. However, the reason it doesn't make sense and the reason the guys say me it won't happen is because this guy's a past president. He's already allegedly sold documents. We know that he'll sell things. We know he stored those top secret documents in his bathroom at Mar-a-Lago. You know, you can't trust this guy. If he's in general population out of prison or even in club fed, even if he's in the ritziest federal prison, which they call club fed, he's still at risk for an international incident, the spirit guides are saying. somebody pushes him off of his golf cart at club fed. Somebody, you know, puts something in his McDonald's wannabe burger at club fed and he crosses over and somebody says, I take responsibility. I'm with X, Y, Z group. And now what does the United States do to that? Oh, you just killed our ex-president in prison. We're just going to look the other way. Are we going to look the other way? It's, it's an international incident waiting to happen. So I don't ever see him in a general population prison. I see him in, and I've always seen this, in a room that is looks like a hospital room or a you know funny farm room. I don't know, rubber walls. I don't know. He's in PJs. You can, you know, iron on his little 45 thing. I don't care. We don't care. You know, uh, sometimes for cruelty, I see one of those TVs that's mounted that looks like a window. And out that, and the TV just plays constant pictures of McDonald's in the distance that he can't ever get to. <laughs> and perhaps Hillary Clinton and Obama and Biden pictures just rolling and rolling. And maybe Tish James, maybe Fonnie Willis. <laughs> just, just for cruelty. That's just my own personal, you know, if I were to like put in an order with the universe, that would be my order. But anyway, I digress. I, I, I see I got into like into, into the human part of me that really wants vengeance, you know. So anyway, I see him in this lockdown get mo situation. It would be not even Leavenworth, not even a place where other prisoners were, because you cannot trust, truly, you cannot trust anybody going in or out of this building. The building has to have absolutely no cell phone service. It maybe needs to be a lead bunker. No cell phone service because you cannot trust anybody. Okay. Because somebody will get a phone into him and then he'll be, you know, staging a coup in the prison. So this is a get most situation, right? So this is what I've always seen for you guys. Always, always, always. Now, the other option is that he goes to the hamburglar in the sky. You know, he goes to the great McDonald's in the sky. That's the other option. Okay. Now, how he gets into the rubber room could be because of his lack of mental acuity, a function, awareness, whatever you want to call it. Or, or he is, or he goes in for his own protection, honestly. Not kidding you. Because once again, we cannot have one of our enemies abducting our nutty, goofy, ridiculous ex-pres and hold him a hostage. International incident. This is what they just keep saying. 45 is a international incident waiting to happen right now. You know, he could jump on a plane or do, now he hasn't left the country. Isn't it surprising to you that he has not left the country since Jack Smith came on the scene? He goes to Illinois. He goes to Wisconsin. He goes to Florida. He doesn't go to Scotland. There's a reason, you guys. There's more going on. There's more justice going on than the media reports. And you want to know what? Jack Smith is happy to keep it like that. Jack Smith is happy to work under cover of darkness until he drops the hammer on you. Surprise attack. Okay? So now why they're telling you, why were they telling you all? They were telling you this because I got off on, I, I got excited about him in this rubber room. And then I got, oh, Mershon, thank you. Judge Mershon. Okay. 
leverage to the hilt. See, they always, they're like, you were saying, Susan. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate that because we are a team, sort of. Okay. He's leveraged to the hilt. He's going into this criminal case, supposedly in two weeks, uh, in, in at the 15th of April or 16th of April. So he's going into this criminal case. A couple of things I want to talk about with that. First of all, so Judge Marshawn has given, has put slapped, they want to use the word I said, put, they said slapped. Who's now being the, uh, you know, human that's all, you know, vindictive. Anyway, they're like, it's just a matter of speech. They're so dry, but somebody has a sense of humor with this whole nuts and device thing. Anyway, I swear to God, I'm going to say this. He's leveraged to the hilt. Why that matters is, is that Judge Marshawn is likely to give him a fine. The sentence is likely to be a fine. The sentence is not likely to be jailed. That's why they took me into the whole jail thing. Okay. The sentence is not likely to be jail. It's likely to be money. And he can't pay any more money. He does, he's run out of dummies to give him money. There's only so many dummies on this planet. Now, I know these people aren't dumb. I mean, they're, they are dumb. They are dumb. But anyway, they don't think they're dumb because for them, it's quid pro quo. You know, for them, it's they're buying access. For them, they're hedging their bets. You know, the worst thing this guy's thinking, the worst thing is I get Mar-a-Lago. The worst thing is I get, you know, one floor of Trump Tower. The worst thing is I get some golf courses. Well, the question is, is this guy above the New York? Well, okay, so right. So they're, they're reminding me that if Trump loses his case, which he will, that 175 million or whatever it is, immediately, that money immediately goes to the state of New York. So right off the bat, they get 175 million. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. Um, and then everybody has to get in line over the mortgages, the uh, because he's leveraged to the hilt. He doesn't own anything. He honestly doesn't own anything. So everybody has to get in line, meaning the New York state of New York and the mortgage owners, you know, the lien holders, all these people have to get in line to decide who's going to get their money and who's going to get their money first. Now, he doesn't have any money. Uh, so this is going to hurt. This money that he got loaned makes him less and less able to meet his upcoming fiduciary responsibilities. That's what the spirit guide said. It hurt him. He did not get off scot-free. He's leveraged. He can't get any more loans. This was the last of the last. Yes, he, he got money. Yes, he got off, if that's what you want to say. He's not. Think about it like this, the guides are saying. Think about um, a bad guy trying to get away and he's, he's running away. He's, he's exiting stage right. He's running away, but you know, his, his pant leg got caught in something and he can't, he, he's getting, he's only going so far. He's only going so far. He's not running away. This guy's not getting away with anything. He really isn't. He's playing chess. He makes a move. We make a move. He makes a move. We make a move. We have to use the chess board, which is the legal system. Is he playing us? Yes. Is he, is he abusing the legal system? Yes. He's still operating within the legal system. Now, this thing with Judge Marchand, I want to look at that just briefly because, um, well, because, okay, so we know that he said bad things about the judge's daughter. It was prove, proven that the judge's daughter did not make that social media post that was not hers. Her account was hacked. Uh, number one. Number two, he, he went on some kind of crime spree. They're calling it a crime spree. I don't know why. Uh, but he went on a, a social media truth spree when he was, I swear that is so dystopian. I just can't believe how dystopian we are living right now where he sends out something called truce. <laughs> it's, you couldn't, we all should have been terrified when those books came out. Okay. Uh, the George Orwell and all of those books. Anyway, so 
We know that he's impugning, I think is the word they want to use, Judge Mershon, Judge Mershon's family. Uh, we know that he's crossed some red lines, they're saying. And, and some things are, so right. So Judge Judge Mershon has had to put extra security around his family and around him. Um, there seems to be some, ex, some like maybe not his nucleus, not, not his nuclear family, his, his daughter, whatever, but there's external people that, that are at risk, like uh, a delivery person, um, somebody who's external to the family, perhaps somebody that works, that's coming in to work on the house. There's some kind of energy around an external person have, having been threatened uh, or even roughed up, you know, not something you're going to read about in the news probably, but going forward as why are they showing me this? I don't know. I'm channeling you guys. Just bear with me. So as I went into that energy, I saw threats. So again, 45 is up against it. He, he has no more exit points. He's a cornered animal. He's going to be acting accordingly, meaning he's going to start biting people. He's not hissing anymore. He's not snapping anymore. He's going to bite people. This is really going to get him in trouble. I've seen him have some sort of, you know, like outburst in a courtroom or outburst in public that is caught on video that proves that it was assault, you know, even if it's a slap, okay? Even if it just makes him look bad, it makes him look like he lost his temper and he had a little temper tantrum. That kind of, you're going to see more of that kind of videos reaching the public. I think the videos are out there already, but I think you're going to see them reaching the public more. There's, there's this sense of that last uh, lunar eclipse illuminating um, and this coming up solar eclipse really illuminating, taking the gauze off of our eyes. All last year, the spirit guides talked about uh, people having this gauze over their eyes. They couldn't see clearly. This is being removed. And oh, another analogy they used is when you go into the basement and you flip on the light and then there's roaches and you didn't know they were there because you never go in the basement at night. Well, because we never go in the basement at night. Hello. But you did. And now you know you have a problem that you didn't know existed. And it's horrifying. This is the exact analogy of our being able to see as if for the first time just how bad things are, even though, as the guide said many times, this is all in the public domain. There have been many books written about this, uh, many, many books written in detail about his behavior, about these things, and the public has not wanted to listen to that or absorb that energy or understand that energy or acknowledge that these things are true. Now we are coming to the new place where we're ready to acknowledge it. We're ready to look at it and we're going to be horrified. So buckle up, buttercup, because this is the worst part of the nightmare. This is the worst part of the roller coaster when we get to see the horrendous things that have been happening. Now, I'm going to go back to Marshawn and tell you what I saw, but I want to say this too. And because these things are now coming to fruition, a lot of the things the guides have said over the last year and frankly, many years, your family members may May, who were not MAGA, but who were just disinterested in politics, who just, you know, maybe they were raising kids, maybe they were really working, or maybe they had some health issues and they just, you know, they just didn't watch politics. They're going to be coming to you going, what is happening? I know you watch the politics. They're going to be shocked. They're going to be amazed. They're going to be terrified. And again, we would like to remind you, public service announcement, do not scream at them. If you were paying attention, you would know what was happening. If you were paying attention, you would have been voting. And I told you to, that is not going to be helpful. Do not do that. Do not do that. Let them have their moment. You want them to be an ally. You don't want to, you don't want to make them uh, irritated at you. You don't want to push them away. You don't want to make them mad. Let them have their moment. Just listen to them yell and scream and agree with them. Yes, it's terrible. Yes, it's terrible. Yes, it's terrible. Yes, it's terrible. That's all you're going to say. And then after like maybe the 25th, yes, 
that's true and it is terrible, you're going to say, you know what might be really helpful, what might make you feel better is to go down and become a registrar and registrar people to vote or go to this campaign. You know, we really like this person who's running in our local area. You know, maybe go down and visit them and see if you can volunteer because I find that when I take action about something that I'm upset about, that I feel better. So you're going to listen to them so that then once they feel like you're an ally and they feel enraged because when you don't try to shut down somebody else's rage, their rage can burn, burn, baby, burn. We want their rage to burn. We don't want to put cold water on it by putting them down. We want them to be really upset so that they go and vote. So maybe they go and text, text bank. Maybe they volunteer for a campaign. So don't shut these people down when they come to you and they say, ah, the world is on fire. How come you didn't tell me it was this bad? You may want to hit them. You may want to take a swing at them. Don't do it. Don't do it. Step back and let them burn. Think about it. Because all that anger and all that fire is going to go to action. Just direct them to the action. I feel better when I take action. You might want to just, you may want to take some action here. Be sure to vote. They're going to feel better. And then they're going to be your ally. And then you're going to be voting together instead of them sitting at home, not knowing what's going on. Okay. So that's coming. Now the magus in your family, they're just going to do that thing. The guides have always said, which is they're all bad. All politicians are bad. The Democrats are bad. The Republicans are bad. They're all crooks. When somebody says that to you, you know that they're a disenfranchised MAGA voter. And we like that. You can just say, yeah, perhaps so. Maybe they are. I don't know. If you don't think they're reachable, if you're going to get in an argument by saying they're not all bad, Biden is this, 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 and you know they're not ready to hear that, do not confront them. Just agree that they're all bad because you want to know what? A disenfranchised MAGA voter that's never going to vote for Biden who stays home is good by me. I love those disenfranchised voters. Stay home, honey. Stay home. If you think they're ready to hear about Biden, and this is something you're going to have to really be careful about, then perhaps you can kind of tiptoe some little statements. You know, I don't know that local guy who is a Democrat, he's done some good things. Maybe Biden is the thing you can't talk about. Maybe you can start introducing some things that are adjacent to Biden, but not Biden. You need to pick your battles carefully. I would just as soon rather have your family members who are crazy magus stay home. Okay. I'm good with that. Now, if you can talk to them in some kind of sane way about Biden's policies, please do. And for sure, talk to everybody about Biden's policies. When you're at the grocery store, I had my student loans, you know, forgiven. You know, I, I really, you know, think that this is happening. That's very helpful. I'm glad that uh, this infrastructure, you know, even if you don't associate it with Biden, you could say it's really great that we're getting these new things built uh, in our city. And, and if they say, yeah, Lauren Boebert did it, then you could say, well, no, you really should look into that because actually Lauren Boebert voted against it. And then trundle off with your cart. Okay, now let's talk about Juan Marchand and what I saw. I, I did see some intimidation. The level of intimidation is going to be through the roof. Okay, so these, these people, what I'm seeing are people that are coming into the United States that are not citizens. Oh my gosh, really, uh, truly not citizens but they're not who you think they are. They're maybe from a different country that might not be south of here, right? They might be some hired hired guns, hired people uh, that are slipping in to do no good because then they can slip back out and they it's very hard for us to track them down, okay? 
Now, I feel like these, right, I think it's already happening. I think these intimidation attempts are aimed specifically, again, at people in the universe of, say, Judge Mershon or Fonnie Willis or Alvin Bragg or any of these other people. So some people adjacent to them are getting, you know, more and more intimidation threats. And perhaps even you might see something about some sort of item placed near someone's home. Um, this item could go boom. I have to be careful about the words I use. So again, the intimidation is going to be going up and up and up and up because that's all they know. This is how they do things. This is how they operate. We operate on the chessboard of law. They operate on the chessboard of organized crime. Okay, we are going to stay within the laws. We're not going to do anything that is not based in the law. We have to, to preserve our society. Will they run around and do things that are unlawful? Yes, they will. Does it take a while for, for justice to catch up with those things? Yes, it does. We're doing what we can right now because we found out that a lot of laws don't have teeth in them or a lot of things were tradition and not laws. So we're going to fix all of this. Truly, we're going to fix all this. The spirit guides have always said, we're going to fix it at the federal level because the states have gone crazy. They said this before Roe v. Wade went out, which they did predict. We're going to fix it at the federal level. We have to fix it at the federal level. We can't count on the states acting in a sane way because they've been infected with these people. So we get the presidency, the House, the Senate this fall, and then we start doing the things we need to do. We start passing new laws. Okay, so some of those laws will be if you intimidate a judge, if you intimidate a jury, if you if it's going to be broader, it's going to it's going to take that law and make it broader. And I feel like there's going to be international components to these laws, because this is how they're trying to get away with it. They're bringing these international people in to do the crime and then international people slink back out. And then we got to go find them in some other country that may or may not have U.S. extradition laws on the books. That makes it very hard for us to get them back. But we have Jack Smith on the case, and he is all about international law having come from The Hague. So I just want to tell you guys, justice is coming. He's not gotten away with anything, you guys. He has not gotten away with anything. He's simply abiding the rules the judge reduced his bail. That's that's within our legal system. He's paid his bail. That's within our legal system. We're still holding him to account. He's still going to be held to account. And the other thing I would say, well, actually, let me go back to that because. OK, let me never mind. OK. The other thing I would say is that there's more of us than them. Yes, you know, there's dark money, there's the Federalist Society, there's Leonard Leo, there's all these people. And, and there's judges in all these judgeships that perhaps are not fit to be judges. Maybe they're not as fair as they should be. Yeah, the system is cooked. It's, it's wrong. We're going to fix that. We're going to work on that. Not only for people like Trump, but everybody down to the bottom. Uh, you know, the, the, the guy, the woman down with the lowest crime all the way up to the highest crime. This all needs to get reworked so it's much more fair. There's more of us than them. This is the era we're going into. I don't care. I don't care what the Supreme Court says. I don't care what any president says. When we, when, when citizens, when the people of the world 
get activated, get mad, get in the streets, things are going to change. See Exhibit A, the 1960s. Imagine those very brave African-American girls that, that went into that school. Imagine those very brave African-American people that sat at that lunch counter. They said, no. The answer is no. We're not going to be treated like this. And we don't care what you do to us. We're at that point where the answer is no. We're not going to be treated like this. This is where we're going, you guys. I'm telling you, I see doctors in the streets. I see nurses in the streets. I see women in the streets. I see every single culture, every single ethnicity in the streets. And we all have one thing in common. And you want to know what that is? We're not going to be treated like this. We're not going to be treated like this. Doctors want to take care of their patients. Nurses want to take care of their patients. Every ethnicity that has gotten a raw deal wants to be treated like a human, like Donald Trump gets treated. We all want to be treated like he gets. We want to get all the breaks he got. We want to level this classes, classism. We want to level this hierarchy of class. It's coming. And we can do this the easy way or the hard way. The easy way is, you know, Biden, the Democrats take over the House and the Senate and they get real busy real quick and pass the Voting Rights Act and reestablish Roe v. Wade, a woman's right to choose and start establishing fairer treatment of humans, of United States citizens. That's, that's the easy way, folks. The hard way is we don't win quite as many seats. We, we do take the House and the Senate. I see that. We need enough seats to overcome the filibuster. We need enough seats to overcome, you know, this blocks that now even Manchin is doing. Manchin has now stepped into the breach and blocking things. We need to overcome Citizens United. We can do this. The Democrats can do this. But if they don't, for whatever reason, then we're going on the streets. And we're going to do it the hard way. It will happen. These, this power structure will bend to the wheel, will of the people. I promise you, it will. Easy way, hard way, one way or the other. We will have greater consumer rights. We will have better voting rights. We will have better race relation rights. We will have better rights for Native Americans. We will, the whole thing. Everybody is going to have a seat at this table. Everyone. Either you invite us to sit down at your table and you listen to us. You take our, our, what we are, you take our concerns seriously and not just, you know, pat us on the back and say everything's okay. Or we're going to mess up your country. We're going to mess up. We're going to have strikes. We're going to have. Yeah, I see strikes. I see not only in the streets of the doctors, the nurses, the teachers, but I see the AFL-CIO. I, I see big unions getting in the streets. They will shut this place down. That's the hard way. You choose your adventure. One way or another, change is coming to this land. Change is coming to the world. This isn't just happening in the United States. This is happening everywhere. The power to the people. It's coming. There's more of us than there are them. Truly, that is what they don't want you to know. That is what they don't want you to know, that you have this power. That we are powerful. And humans are stepping into their power. We're going to be able to have more capacity to heal ourselves. We're going to have more capacity to have intuition to guide us. We're going to wake up to our own power. And we're not going to be falling for this overdeveloped sense of capitalism. 
it's going to have its place. But it's not going to be it's not going to be the sun that rises in the sky, which is what it is right now. We're not all going to live and die based on capitalism because that is not human. Just like just like that makes sense now. Just like Citizens United is not human. Corporations are not human. We're going to put the human back in to our political and power structures. So I'm not, I'm just not worried. I'm not, I'm simply not worried about Trump making bond. Yep. He played, he, he moved his little chess piece, but he's checkmated. He can't get away. He's checkmated. You guys, he's not going to get away with this. The things all of these psychics have been telling you are all coming true right before your eyes. We're not always 100% correct. But even if we're 80% correct, that's above the statistical odds. So, yes, things are going to be a little bit dicey as 45 does things that are more and more crazy, heretical. The word they want to use is heretical, but I don't know why. As he acts out more and more. As we turn on that basement light and we see all those roaches. Things are going to be surprising. We're going to get shock and awe. We are going to get it. But we are in the final, final acts of this play. It's a ter like I've told you guys, a terrible movie. I wish I could fast forward through it, but the fast forward button is broken from me pushing it all the time. So, and all of us pushing it all the time, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. It don't work. We have to live through it. We came here to witness this. We came here to live through this. It's going to be okay. One way or another, it's going to be okay. Because there's more of us than there are of them. And like we talked about, your friends, your neighbors, your family members that have not been involved in politics are starting to wake up and go, why are these books banned? Why can't my wife get the medical needs she needs to get? What is going on? When did all this happen? When did the world go to hell in a handbasket? They're really going to be crazy shocked at how bad it is. Biden has got this in the bag. 45 is going down. He either goes in his rubber room or he goes to the great McDonald's in the sky. Then next year, we're going to circle the wagons around Flynn and all of these other people that would be uh, traitors or people that would be um, challenging our democracy. You know, we're going, we're going to go after them. Jack Smith's job is not done. He has a very long vision. He doesn't, you know how long cases take to go through the Hague? That's what they just told me. Do you know how long cases take to go through the Hague? A decade. Jack Smith, let's just say he's got job security. It may be too long for you and I, but justice never stops. It never sleeps. It's always moving forward. And we need to give everybody their due diligence, their due justice. We have to follow the rules, even if they are not following the rules. And then when we get the opportunity, we'll make the rules more stringent so that these people that would try to evade justice, that would try to evade the rules, will find it harder to do so. You know, first of all, you have to realize you have a problem before you can fix the problem. This is where we are. We're seeing all the problems and we're taking note of the problems and we're saying, we don't like this. We don't want to live like this. We're not going to put up with this. And now we're going to vote. We're going to get activated. We're going to get busy and change it, change the whole structure. 
so that it matches the place we want to live in, the place we want our kids to live in, our grandkids to live in, the place we want our dogs to live in, our cats to live in, right? It's really not that bad. I feel good about it. I really feel good about it. And y'all know I'm spicy. I would tell you if I didn't feel good about it. Okay, with that, I'm going to end this transmission. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Take really, really good care of yourselves because I need you to be healthy through this time. I need you to, to get to the end. Remember, the, they're showing me I need to see you. And I don't mean you specifically, but I mean, I need to see, because I see this visually, I need you to be here so that we all see the generations in the street. I see the boomers helping these Gen Zers. This is how you protest. This is what you do. We know we've been there. We did this. I want to see all. All of the different cultures and the different races helping each other in the streets once again. So I need you to take care of yourself. That's an order. Take care of yourself so that we can get through this together, so we can celebrate together. Okay? I'll see you really soon. I've got a lot going on this week. If I get this video out today, then I will tell you that I'm going to be on Kevin Chandler's, which is Kevin Loving Vibrations, talking politics tomorrow night. Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'll have a way out Wednesday, God willing. And I'll be here with you every step of the way. Take really good care, everybody. See you soon. For entertainment purposes only.